Neha Ghosh, a third year student at MIT Manipal and in this video, we'll be talking about the curriculum that I had in my fifth semester of college. I've also made four similar videos like this before, so I would highly recommend you watch those before continuing with this one. Also, a lot of the videos in the MIT playlist because they'll give you a deeper understanding of how things work in Manipal. With that being said, let's get started. Number 0. Embedded Systems A little bit of extra information before I start with the actual material. This used to be in the curriculum for CSE in the 4th semester, IT in the 5th semester and CCA in the 6th semester. I don't know about CCE but from this academic year onwards, IT will have the subject in the 4th semester instead of the regular 5th. The course structure kind of changes every 4 years and ours was the last batch with the previous plan for the upcoming years. So everyone watching this video for information, please check out the course matrix to accurately map the timeline of each course that you will be having. Starting with the actual subject. Embedded systems. I like to divide it in majorly two parts. The first one is programming in assembly language and the second one is an LPC 1768. Since we had a subject called COM which stands for computer organization and microprocessors in our fourth semester which had a huge part in assembly. The first part of ES wasn't that difficult to grasp but for the upcoming years there is no COM so you'll need quite a lot of practice to understand it. There is a bit of hardware theory at the start, some basic connotations about memory allocation and how it actually works in the computer system, then basic instructions in assembly language, all the equivalents of a high level programming language in it, registers, jump instructions, logic building, recursion and they'll just keep going. The second part is an LPC 1768. Actually, the entire thing is an LPC 1768, but the second part is a little more pronounced. You will start with LEDs, multiplex 7 segments, LCDs, timers, counters, ADCs, ADCs with interrupts, PWM, stepper motor, all the good stuff. Now, one thing to keep in mind, everything that is taught, everything that is included in our course material is not available anywhere online not Google, not YouTube, even chat GPT is wrong half of the time. I beg you, go to every class, pay attention to what the teacher is teaching, ask questions, put in as much of effort as possible in participating and study really really hard. For us, it was a 4 credit subject, others might have it as a 3 credit one. Apart from being a 4 credit subject which massively affects your GPA, it is also a blessing in disguise. I say that because it is not something that a lot of people understand. It isn't something that you can just mug up a couple of nights before the exam. So if you really take the time to go through all the concepts, it is going to be super convenient to score well and get a good grade. I fortunately had an amazing professor. I attended all the classes and asked as many doubts as possible. That's why I did not have to refer to anything apart from the class notes that I had made. The answer paper was also really similar to the previous year question papers. Really similar kinds of questions, a couple of concepts mixed in together. Very interesting, very challenging too. Number one, Embedded Systems Lab. This is all code and execution. Theory subjects might let you get away with memorizing the code, but labs are going to be absolutely strict with it. Now onwards, most labs are going to have a mini project integrated in with the coursework. It is usually worth 20 marks, which means that sometimes your ensemble will now be only worth 20 marks instead of the normal 40 earlier. This is going to take place over a couple of months. You'll have to propose your initial idea with a synopsis. The teacher is going to approve of that or suggest some changes as required and then you're going to start working about it. Just before the answer, you'll be given slots to present your entire working model with a lot of reports specified per format. You'll have to do all of this in a group. A group typically has three people, either role number wise 
or self assigned we got really lucky because three different branches had it in three different semesters so there's a fair bit of liberty that you can take with the inspiration of your project of course you cannot copy or plagiarize but there were still broadly only a few kind of projects you have to use sensors it's not compulsory but all the ideas pitched to the teachers without sensors were rejected on the grounds of being too simple Majorly, there were temperature sensing ideas, motion detectors, humidity level trackers, the works. This is the start of your introduction to plagiarism rules. No more than fifteen percent overall. There's a software called Turnitin used by the staff officially. Use that. Manipulate stuff. Play around. Be smart about it. This was also the only lab with quizzes in it, worth four marks each. I think they were held thrice, if I'm not wrong. You're gonna get the assessment plan at the start of the semester. The lab midsem is just assembly code, super doable. Focus on not messing that up. And sir is just LPC, so it's kind of fifty-fifty after that point. I remember there were five topics broadly that you had to study for the end sem, and I tried guessing what would be asked for our lab batch. I messed up so bad while guessing it. I studied only three, and of course the ones that I didn't. Two of them. They were asked on the paper. That was a disaster. Focus practicing as much as possible with the kit during class hours, after lab. whatever works for you have fun with it. number 2 database systems this is also going to get shifted to the fourth semester for it from the fifth semester earlier just like es this i also divided into two parts majorly at the start it was full of queries basic sql advanced sql lots of plsql which i unfortunately did not understand at all and it screwed me up in the midterms er diagrams and all then the second part has transactions concurrency serializability a lot of concepts which were easy marks study the second half of the unit a lot more rigorously than the first half especially for the nsems that is always tested more because the prior topics have already been tested in prior assignments One thing that I was really pissed about: there was no partial marking for any of the queries, at least in the internals and the midsems. I don't know how it was graded in the endsems. Nobody knows actually, really. But literally, a three-mark query, one single thing missing, zero. Four-mark query, something slightly different from the answer key. An absolute zero. There was no half mark, no one mark, no nothing. The midsem average was literally a ten out of thirty. This was my lowest grade out of all the theory subjects. At one point, I was scared if they'll even pass us because a majority of the people that I asked in my branch had their internals in low twenties. I, in fact, barely crossed twenty out of fifty. Studied my ass off for the finals. I got to see kind of relieved not going to lie I thought I would end up at a D or an E god forbid number 3 Database Systems Labs. This was a two-credit lab again with a mini project. You'll have to provide the synopsis, the project progress, official reports. All of them have marks. Just like ES, the DBS mini project is also conducted right before the NSEMS. It needs to be fully working. Has to have a lot of PLSQL-based triggers and cursors, all the fancy stuff. Please go to the teacher very regularly and ask them all the things that need to be compulsorily integrated because we didn't and it was a bit of a shock when a night before we found out that all these things need to be present in the project because they have a majority of the marks and let's just say none of us had slept for 48 hours first two labs are based on the front end we were taught how to use visual c sharp i know it says database labs but we also needed to have a working front end through which we would have accessed the back end but that was not the case for cse only ict branches the marks distribution was also different so pay attention at the start of the semester when they explain what all things are included after the first two labs we were introduced to sql then advanced sql plsql joining the front end and the back end and then a self learning component 
of MongoDB. A tip, get the software used in the lab from the lab assistant. I think it's because it's an official software or something because the same thing when downloaded from the internet did not work for a lot of functions. You're free to choose the front end. It could be Visual C Sharp, it could be HTML, CSS, JavaScript and then some JavaScript frameworks or libraries up to you. The database needs to be SQL though. Most people ended up choosing MySQL because the software SQL Plus that was being used in the labs was not compatible with a lot of the things on our personal laptops. Plus it was generally also really obscure, not a lot of online tutorials. Number 4. Software Engineering This was by far one of my most favorite subjects this semester. But I might be a little biased because I got a good it's a theoretical subject, at least the first half, because there's a lot of mugging up that you'll have to do. But it needs to be applied to the problems. They'll never ask you direct questions. For example, there is something known as the Agile Development Model. Its main characteristic is that it focuses on flexibility for all the stakeholders involved. So you will be given a case study and based on that, if you think that the Agile model is a best fit, you will have to explain why and all the characteristics related to that. There are also a lot of diagrams in the middle portion of it, state diagrams, sequence diagrams, activity diagrams, use case diagrams, swim lane diagrams, which you need to draw based on how the question is given to you. Then again, a little bit more theory at the end, which again, you'll need to apply. This subject was really easy too. That is why the curve went really high. People with 48 internals landed with an A, even after an amazing end set. And 75 was not even a C. The average in the midterms was a 23 out of 30. So there's very little margin for error. Every couple of marks changed your grade. Apparently, the NSEMs were going to be very difficult to offset the high internal score that everyone had and to even out the curve a little more. But even that was fairly easy. It's kind of like math. There are specific steps that you'll have to follow to get to your final answer. You write them correctly, you get full marks. Really interesting. It's also 4 credits, so make sure you get a good grade in it. Target for an A plus or an A at the least. Practice previous year question papers, draw all the diagrams and you're halfway there. Number 5. Cyber security. This is a completely theoretical subject. No numericals, no application, no nothing. You memorize the things on the slice and you regurgitate it on the test. We had around 700 slides. Nobody really refers to the textbook even if the teachers say that it's really important. No one has that kind of time. Again, kind of an easier subject. The cutoffs went again really high. You can score well in this by making sure that you perform well in every internal test conducted, starting right from the MISACs and the FISACs. The answer was really weird. I don't know what happened with it. Just very vague questions not related in any way to the slides that we had been given. I don't even know what the department was thinking about when they were setting that paper. A small disclaimer, this subject was only there for IT and not CS. For CC, it was information security and you might be tempted to think that it's the same thing because most of the times it is but you will be very wrong in that assumption. Cyber security and IS could not be more different. Cyber security is full theory, IS is full of application based questions. Lots of numericals, a lot of solving is required, a thorough understanding is crucial. The answer was also very tricky apparently. Just a little bit of extra info dump because you've made it this far. Number 6. Essentials of Management This subject is offered by the Humanities Department to half of the batch at a time. So, half of the batch might get EESM, which stands for Engineering, Economics and Financial Management in the 5th semester and then EOM in the 6th and the second half has it vice versa. CSE, ICT, Triple E, all these branches, all these departments had EOM first. It is a road learning based subject. A little boring to be very honest. I was really excited at the start of the semester for it but when I realized that there's no application really required in this, it kind of lost my interest. It's just an accumulation of endless slides 
and the marking is really stringent. You cannot bullshit your way out of this. You have to write the exact points mentioned in the answer key to get marks. There's a lot of topics covered, entrepreneurship, staffing, management, communication, hiring, planning, organizing, but all just theoretical, unfortunately. Number seven, NPS Lab. This stands for Network Programming Systems. This was by far the most difficult lab I have ever had. Socket programming in itself is really challenging and on top of that, we, IT people, did not have a theoretical subject based on it, which would explain to us the concepts behind it. So, it was literally like throwing infants into water and expecting them to survive. CCA had a subject NPACN, which stands for Network Programming and Advanced Computer Networking, if I'm not wrong, which goes into detail about everything that is required for execution in labs. IT did not have it. We were almost through a fourth of the course before the teachers realized that we weren't able to understand anything. So in the middle of the labs, we had some theory classes just to explain to us what was happening. The first half was socket programming in C, building databases, using APIs, and the second one was in Cisco Packet Tracer. The second part was infinitely more understandable and a lot more doable. I recommend doubling down on that because even if you've practiced socket programming a lot, it does not work all the time. I'm lucky. I passed this lab only because of all the lab record evaluation and program checks. They were really generous with the internals. Otherwise, half of the batch would have had to stay back and repeat it during the winter break. That is it for today. Like, share, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!